What is up, peeps? Ed to WTV HD here. I'd like to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And today, we are going over the top 10 Pokemon from Celestial Storm. Now, of course, this is my opinion. So please be aware that you may disagree with me. And that's perfectly fine. That is what the comment sections are for. Let me know if you do disagree. And uh, before I do get into it, I'm sorry if you hear any noise in the background. I have a fan on. It's like 30-something degrees here uh, in the UK. So it's boiling hot. I am absolutely baking. So I do need the fan on. So I apologize in advance there. Um, but it's actually going to be a pretty fun list. We have Celestial Storm coming out very soon. It is always on the first Friday of the month, so it will be on the 3rd of August, if I'm correct, where we will have the Celestial Storm set released and into the standard format. Now, this is going to be pretty fun. There's a lot of good cards in here, so let's jump into it. At number 10, we have Swampert. Now, let me go over what Swampert does. We have the ability, which is uh, basically it's the same as trade, but you draw three cards instead of two. So, yeah, that's pretty good. And the attack is three colorless energy, high hydro pump, 80 damage, and it does 20 more times you have energy attached to the Pokemon. So, uh, let me just start off saying the, the ability is good. The ability is absolutely great. Now, the reason why this is at the 10th spot and not anywhere higher up is the uh, one is a stage two, and it's going to be extremely awkward just to have the ability. Uh, you're better off just getting a Zorark. You are better off just going into a Zorark. You can, um, you know, just evolve up into that a lot easier, a lot more consistently, and you can just trade, right? Now, of course, this gives you the one extra card, but for just for the sake of the the, the, or the clunkiness of stage two, it's not really worth just getting the extra card through your through your trade ability. I'm just going to call it trade, even though it's called power draw. Um, so I don't think it's worth the extra awkwardness. Also, the attack itself is not that great. Doing 20 more damage um, for every water energy attached to the Pokemon uh, is not great because it's attached specifically to Swampert. Now, Swampert is a stage two, which means it's awkward to get up. And then you need to start adding a lot of energy to it. So you're investing a hell of a lot into one card. So if Swampert goes down, usually you won't be in a good spot. And that's where I think Swampert fails quite heavily. It needs energy to do good damage. Even though the ability is great, it's just too awkward. It needs a lot of energy. It needs a lot of investment. And it can be taken out in the one-shot meta that we're currently in. At number nine, we have Septile. Now, of course, this has the same problems as Swamper in that it's a stage two, it's too easy to take down, and that's why it's not any higher up. However, the one thing I like about this is its attack and ability. Now, the attack is prevent all damage done to your Pokemon with any grass energy attached to it from attacks of Ultra Beast. Now, this is fantastic. It's just a direct counter to Boswell. This is what we needed in our current format where Ultra Beasts are just running wild, where Beast Ring is around. Uh, we need a counter to Ultra Beasts uh, because even things like Beast Box is getting a buff, which I'll talk about soon. But a buzz walls, anything like that, it's all something that we need to be aware of. Now, of course, the attack is also pretty darn good. It does 20 damage times the other energy you have attached to all your Pokemon. So this is pretty much just a much better version of Swampert's attack, right? It has one energy attack cost, which is much better. It's not three, so it's not as clunky. It has the uh, the damage modification through energy in play on your side of the field, not attached specifically to Sceptile. So you only need the one energy on Sceptile. If you have a ton of energy in play, let's say you're playing Vico Vault Sceptile, which is a bit clunky, let's be honest. But let's say if you have some sort of energy in play, you're playing Beast Ring with Feromosa, let's say, you know, anything like that, you can do more damage that way. So you don't have to have it attached to Sceptile. So it's just a much better version of Swampert on the attack front. Also, one retreat cost is much better compared to Swampert's three retreats. So that's why it takes the, 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 the number nine slot ahead of Swampert. But again, it has all the problems Swampert has as a stage two it's just too clunky well let's go on to number eight and this is the first basic pokemon on the list it is latios prism star not to be confused with latias prism star now the reason why this is quite low on the list is a few reasons it's only as good as the cards that are due to come out now the reason being is because of its first attack or only attack should i say this attack does 50 damage for each of your dragon evolution pokemon in play now there's really no dragon evolution pokemon we have that is good right now and the only one that's coming out soon i believe in dragon majesty which looks to be a decent card and might see some play is Dragonite GX. So this will go straight into a Dragonite GX deck, but until then, I don't think it will see play. Also, it's quite awkward being a DCE attack whilst having one retreat cost. Makes it a bit awkward because if you do need to retreat and you don't have your escape board or float stone, then you're going to have to cost that DCE instead 
of just one singular energy so it's not that great when it comes to retreat the hp is pretty good that's that's also that's also pretty nice really having a high hp of 140 it's higher than 130 the extra 10 hp you can't complain it can't be one shot by a zorok uh, also the attack itself is pretty good but the odds of having a lot of evolution pokemon in play dragon evolution pokemon in play isn't that great right now but it depends on dragonite gx um and i believe in dragon majesty we also have alteria which is a just adds 20 damage to dragon pokemon so that's an a, a dragon evolution so that can be played so in a deck let's say where you're playing alteria maybe you can do this but up until new, these new cards come out this card isn't that great well let's go on to number seven it is another stage two pokemon it is blaziken gx now uh, let's just go over what it does we have double colorless energy 60 damage and then we have fire fire colorless 210 damage but discard two fire energy from this pokemon specifically two fire energy gx attack is discard two energy from your opponent's pokemon now the dce attack is good i mean it does 60 damage it can one shot an evolution pokemon that isn't 70 hp think roltz or zorua which you will be up against on occasion especially post rotation uh with uh things like gardevoir potentially coming back so this dc attack is pretty good however be aware it's in stage two so you're not going to be able to get it out on your first turn if you're going second or in your second turn if you're going first it's not it's not an attack you're just going to get off so uh it with it being a stage two it, it kind of does drop the use of this attack however it's something that is good double the colors for 60 damage is okay the main attack is insane it's just an absolute one shot on anything out there other than let's say um well i was, I was gonna say metagross but that's weak to fire i don't know if there's any pokemon out there that wouldn't be one shot by this actually i'm not too sure it's it's looking really really awesome however it's awkward it discards two fire energy and there's no real ways to get it back other than like kiawe or a gx attack through turtle nature gx you know you can't you can't do things like max elixir or anything down that line it's a stage two right so it's a bit awkward to work around which is why it's so low on the list and of course the stage two stage two is not 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 as consistent it's, not, it's just not as consistent as basic pokemon out there and there's so many great basic pokemon coming out in this set as well as um that's come out before in previous sets that it just it just it's just not worth playing it usually now the gx attack as well is not that great discard two energy from your opponent's pokemon is nothing special honestly we've had better gx attacks than, than that so the fact it doesn't do damage as well is not that great so you don't really want to go all the way up to a stage two just to use that gx attack is not great so well let's go to number six we have shift tree gx you can probably realize there's a lot of stage twos on this list uh but this is actually pretty good let's go into what it does so the first attack does 40 damage and it has confusion as well so it's just a basically uh, the same as espions except it's just 10 extra damage so you can't complain the main reason why i like this card and i think it's uh better than blaziken itself and above blaziken and all the cards below it is if you have the same number of cards in your hand uh it does 180 damage for just a grass double colorless yes that's quite a heavy uh um, a heavy attack cost however it's two energy attachments if you do have a dce and it hits 180 choice band 210 which means this card is going to be one shotting a lot of gx pokemon out there 210 is the number people look for if they are unable to hit it they'll look for the 190 but this with choice band can hit 210 so that's wonderful and it's not that hard to have the same cards in your hand as your opponent specifically post rotation post rotation we're going to be having a uh, copycat being played i assume um which is also coming out in this set so you can see the synergy between that and copycat and of course i'm sure you're thinking judge judge is something that we'll probably see play so if you just play like four copycat four judge you can consistently hit these numbers so it's not something that's going to be hard to do that's, that's something great uh the gx attack is not special it's for the same cost as the uh the, the main attack we'll call it which is a grass and double colorless energy it's choose one of your opponent's pokemon your opponent shuffles that pokemon and all cards attached to it into their deck this is pretty decent because it's not specifically bench or active this one you can just choose the card and go okay bye but you're not doing damage so that's not really the preferred option that's you don't even want to do that if your opponent is setting up really well and you want to stop them so let's say they have a malamar in play you just want to get rid of it it's good in some cases it's not that great in others uh, also it's a stage two i have to always remind it remind everyone it's a stage two which means it's awkward it's not something that's going to be fast and right now especially coming for for worlds the, the format is going to be rapid so post rotation this is going to be pretty decent pre rotation it's not going to be that great in the number five spots we have Bennett gx i've done a whole video talking about this and the potential it has with zorog gx i will link that in the card annotation to the top right hand of the screen if you want me to go into more detail but uh being a stage one gx it's not that hard to get out the ability is great because it allows you to move one damage counter from one of your pokemon to another pokemon across the whole board so that's great you can heal your Bennett's. you can take damage from your end and put it on their end or vice versa if you say let's say 
say if you're playing Drampa and you just want to be able to use Drampa's attack 450 damage, you can take one of their damage counters and just put it on one of your 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 bench Pokemon's uh, just so you can use Drampa. So that's I mean there's there's a, there's a bit of use for it there, uh, but it's just a, a cool little ability that will stack up and add up. But it's just a nice little extra uh, bonus for this card. But the the first attack is also pretty good. It's a one energy attack and it does 10 more damage for each support card in your discard pile. You can't add more than 100 damage in that way, so you can be hitting a maximum of 130. And as I said, with Zorak, this is great because of course you can just trade away those support cards and just build up your damage. You can play this with max potion. Um, the GX attack is also pretty good. It's exactly the same as Decidueye's Hollow Hunt. This one is Tomb Hunt GX, which is just put three cards from your discard pile into your hand. That has seen play with Decidueye, and it is a good GX attack nonetheless. Of course, you're not doing damage, but it's a good, consistent GX attack where you can access your discard pile, which is something that is great. All in all, it's a pretty good card. One retreat cost is great, so there's no awkwardness with having to attach another energy to retreat on the card. The one big problem, of course, is it has 190 HP, which is very weak. 190 HP is the same as a good basic GX Pokemon. Think Buzzworld, think Terminator, think Ultra and the Cosmic GX. 190 in the stage one is the lowest we've had so far, but this uh, is it's just a good card overall. It just seems really consistent. It has a lot of potential, and I'd love to see this have some play. Now, in the number four slot, we have Stack Attacker GX, uh, mainly in this list for its awesome ability, as the ability does actually stack. But let's read what it does. Your Ultra Beast takes less, 10 less damage, sorry, from your opponent's attacks, which is great for Beast Box, of course. This will give your Naga Neodor GX if you have four of them in play. Obviously, four is the ideal, but most, um, most likely you have two or three. But let's say if you have four in play, then your uh, Naga Neodor GX has 250 HP. Um, you can, if you really want to, you can throw Dung Bells on, on the, uh, the Naga Neodor GX sorry and that'll give it 290 hp also it's an ultra beast so you can still use things like beast rings let's say you play this specifically with metal energy and you go ahead and play naganado gx you use your one energy start attacking max potion try and keep it alive but if it gets knocked out you can just attach one energy to stack attack a beast ring and you're hitting 120 or if you've taken a, a, a few good prizes you can beast ring attach an energy and then you can do 50 damage for each prize card you have taken which again is pretty good resistance to psychic is also very important because malamar playing a bunch of psychic pokemon this can definitely tank a hit so the card is very good at tanking its ability is fantastic for beast box so it's something that will definitely see play and i think is what beast box really needed taking third place in this list is latias prism star now there's many reasons why this is third place first off 130 hp it's a basic so you can put it down you don't have to worry about getting one shot by zorak that's great unless you have devoured field in play which you might even have in play yourself considering you're a dragon pokemon so be careful if you do play devoured field in any dragon deck because zorak is just gonna one shot this but other than that on its own it's not getting one shot by zorak which is great one retreat cost and one energy attack that makes it a lot less awkward than latios prism star because if you do need to retreat you can just get rid of that energy that you had on the Pokemon to use attack anyway and just retreat or you can escape board for free retreat so it's something you can do uh, the attack is insane which is attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to each of your basic bench dragon Pokemon not everyone knows what's coming up to mind here of course it's very Quasar GX which we'll speak about shortly now this is great it's not only is it good for a Quasar GX you can even play this in Ultra Necrozma if you really wanted to if you as long as you get energy in a discard pile you could just throw this in as a tech for a Ultra Necrozma Malamar deck it's something that can be played of course you'd probably prefer to play uh, Lunala Prism Star. However, this has a lot lower retreat cost to one energy attack and it also does damage. Doing damage plus acceleration is always great, which means at least you're still poking, you're, you're starting to drop the HP of high HP Pokemon, which will allow you to hit the numbers that you do need to hit later on in the future. So all in all, it's a very, very good and very consistent card. Also, it has the potential to accelerate five energy in one turn and that's absolutely wonderful. So that is why it takes the third slot. Number two, we have Rayquaza GX. Now, a lot of you probably would put this at the number one slot, or some of you might even put it lower. A lot of people are saying it's overhyped. But this card, I think anyone can agree, is going to be great. It's going to see play. In Japan, it's already seen play. So it's definitely going to see play at Worlds, which is coming up shortly after this set is released. It will still be pretty good post-rotation. Yes, Max Elixir will go away, uh, which, by the way, Max Elixir has given this card insane speed. But with Max Elixir going away, yes, it slows down, but it's still very, very good and a very, very powerful threat. The ability is great. So let's just say 
that you know what the ability does. It's when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, during your turn you may discard the top three cards of your deck if you do attach a basic energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. Now the wording is very important here. It doesn't say discard the top three if one of them is an energy attach it. No, it just says discard the top three and then attach an energy. So you can have your energy already in the discard pile. All you need to do is discard the top three and then you can accelerate the energy. So you don't need to have the, an energy in the top three cards that you discard so don't think like typhlosion where you discard and then you have to have the energy to do what you need to do but this one is just discard the top three and then accelerate now of course you'll need to play this deck with recovery but discarding the top three cards and milling yourself is something that is very concerning one thing that's quite important is it says you may so you don't have to do it it's like you play it on your bench and you can choose do you want to do it or do you not which is great because sometimes you don't want to mill your deck let's say you are playing against sylvia sometimes you're not going to want to do it but nonetheless it's a bonus ability it's going to help you get that energy in play so you can support its main attack which is dragon break which is a grass lightning colorless energy this attack does 30 damage times you have a basic grass and lightning energy attached to your pokemon so you can see how this works right if you have the free energy doing 90 if you have free energy on another rayquaza you're doing 180 choice span 210 so this is gonna just absolutely stack up very quickly especially if things like max elixir now the energy cost itself is slightly awkward but if you do want to go the extra mile you can play this with vika vault and vika vault would absolutely make this insane would make this deck absolutely insane however it's a stage two so that's why people probably aren't going to do it so all in all it's got insane potential it can deal insane damage it's going to be great pre-rotation. It's still going to be pretty damn good post-rotation. It's got a good ability. And its GX attack is also pretty good, which is discard your hand and draw 10. So all in all, it's just a great card. It's got a lot of potential, and I'd love to see where it goes. And finally, number one, we have Macargo. When Macargo saw play years and years ago with this very card, because of course this is a reprint, it was one of the best consistency engines at its time, and it still will be, to this day, a great consistency engine. It has insane potential. It can be placed into any deck as a consistency engine, and it's also a get out of jail ability. If you have barely any cards in your hand, and you need to top deck something specifically, or let's say you need a Guzma, you can go for Macargo, put it at the top of your deck, and bang, next turn you've hit that Guzma, you've got that top deck that you needed so badly. So it's a great get out of jail card. Now, of course, people are like, well, it's just Mallow for one. But the difference is, the reason why Mallow doesn't see much play outside of Zorok decks is that it's a supporter card, so you lose your draw. You have, you have the, you lose your ability to take the top card of the deck that you've just done. So putting two top cards in your deck for your next turn as a supporter is not as good as just drawing anyway, because you're likely to hit those cards. So people would rather just draw then play mallow however this is an ability it's not a supporter which means you can play other cards and go through other means to get the top card of your deck you can play other supporters like sycamore to get the top card of your deck out you can play octillery pre-rotation you can play oranguru post-rotation you can even play acrobike which is coming up in this set you can get a macargo get the top card on your deck go acrobike choose that top card discard the other so even acrobike gives macargo insane consistency there's loads of loads of ways you can use this this can be used in every single deck just for the ability so it's a great consistency engine and it's definitely Definitely something that will ha has so much versatility. Now, the main reason why I'm putting a top stock is uh, top spot, sorry, is because it is a huge buff to Zorak decks, allowing Zorak to have any card it wants every single turn is insane you could even just play a 1-1 line in your Macargo Zorak deck right you can just you can have you can have Zoropod right and just go ahead and throw a Macargo 1-1 line in there or Zorak Lucario throw a 1-1 line in there you know you can play anything just having the ability to have any card you want every single turn is busted it was so good that computer search which is the card that allows you to do just that had to be an a spec card and had to discard two cards from your hand just to do it now imagine being able to do that every single turn by discarding one card from your hand it's insane so the potential of this card is crazy now of course it takes a bench slot it's different to a, a computer search computer search doesn't need a bench pokemon out doesn't need to risk losing a prize card let's say because it is low hp but nonetheless the ability is just too good to pass uh, and i think the reason why i say this is above any other card in this set is because it's so versatile it can be used in any deck you want to use it in and it can boost any single deck out there it's a consistency engine and everyone knows consistency cards are the best in the game think tapu lele so that is my top 10 pokemon cards from celestial storm do let me know your thoughts down below if you do agree. If you disagree, as I said earlier, let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, do leave a like. I really would appreciate it. If you didn't, leave a dislike and let me know why in the comments below so I can improve my content. Other than that, of course, do subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I'll leave you to it. And peace.